This is Algebra 2, Chapter 7, Section 7, in which we will study base e and the natural logarithm. There's a mathematician, last name of Euler. That's how this is pronounced, Euler. It looks like Euler, but it's Euler. And his constant e, which stands for Euler, is a constant number. It's got a fixed value. The value is roughly 2.718. It's a lot like pi. It goes on and on forever. And it doesn't repeat itself or anything. And just like you know pi is 3.14, you just need to know e is 2.718. Now this number turns up a lot in math and in nature. Okay, things like suspension bridges. Things like uh, you know, compound interest and uh, population growth. These things, it keeps coming up. Now, the natural base function is a special kind of exponential function where the base is e. And typically, this is where you get population problems, exponential growth and exponential decay. Growth, you have a e to the x. Decay, you would have a e to the negative x. a is some constant from the problem. It's typically the starting population. And we'll deal with one of those here shortly, where we make use of that. Okay. If you look at your natural base function and you do the inverse of it, you get what's called the natural logarithm. And that function we write as y equals ln of x. Okay. ln is a log with a base of e. It's uh, kind of a shorthand that mathematicians use. They use ln because in most languages the noun comes first and then the adjective goes after it, so it would be logarithm natural in most other languages. So ln of x is what they use. Now one of the things they're going to ask us to do is flip-flop equations again. Since we have e to the x equals 9, we know how to flip-flop that. The base stays the base. It was an e base, so it becomes a log base e. And the x and the 9 trade jobs, so the x goes away from the e. Well, log base e is a natural log, so we would write it ln of 9. Okay. Similarly, if we have e to the 7 equals x, and we turn that into log form, we would have 7 equals log base e of x doing the flip-flop step. Well, again, log base e is ln, so 7 equals ln x. We can go the other way as well. We have the log function, or log equation, and they want us to write it as an exponential. ln of x equals some value here, 2.1438 then x would equal e to the that power, 2.1438. Similarly, ln of 18 equals x. They want us to write it as an exponential. The e comes over to the x and kicks it upstairs. e to the x equals 18. Nothing more than the flip-flop step. Now, since ln is a log, the rules that we learned previously about logarithms still apply. So they want us to write this as one single log. 6ln8 minus 5ln4. I see powers in front, so they need to move up. The 6 moves up onto the 8. The 5 moves up onto the 4 as a power. Now I see a subtraction. That's going to tell me to make it division. 
8 to the 6th over 4 to the 5th. And I punch those into my calculator, 8 to the 6th divided by 4 to the 5th, and I find out that that's 256. So this expression up here can clean up to become ln of 256. Okay. Let's tangle with another one of that nature. We have 2 ln of 5 plus 4 ln of 2 plus ln of 5y. Well, I see numbers in front of logs. Those need to move up as powers. ln of 5 squared plus ln of 2 to the 4th plus ln 5y. I see addition. That becomes a multiplication. 5 squared is 25, 2 to the 4th is 16, 5y is still there. Punch that into my calculator and clean it up, and somehow that became an x instead of a y. What y? What x? I don't see any x. ln of 2000y is our final answer. Okay. They're also going to ask us to solve some equations that have these E's in them. Well, that's not so scary because we already know how to work with exponential equations. First thing we need to do is move the 5 over. So we'll add the 5 to both sides to get it out of the way. Divide by the 4. Now before we took a log of both sides in this position. But since we have an E, there's a better choice. Instead of taking the log of both sides, we'll take the ln of both sides. ln and E cancel out. That's not technically correct. They're inverse functions of each other. But For your purposes, for thinking about it, you can just say cancel out and it'll be okay. So the ln and the E cancel out and it leaves negative 2x equals ln of 2. Well, your calculator has a button for ln probably next to or beneath the log button that we used last time. So find ln of 2 and then divide by 2 by negative 2 to get what x is. Okay. Let's tangle with another one here. We have 3 ln of 4x equals 24. Well, first thing we need to do is divide by the 3. Now we want to get rid of this ln. We need to flip-flop. So like we did a couple of pages back, we'll flip-flop this. 4x equals e to the 8th. Well, your calculator can find e to the 8th for you. If you use the second ln or the shift ln or the inverse ln to find it out, if you plug that in, you should get a number around 3,000, a little under. 2,980.958 is what my calculator gave me. If you have trouble getting that number, make sure you ask in class and I'll help you get there on your calculator. Again, every calculator is a little different how it likes to take the information. Then all we have to do is divide by the 4. So this one could be a little trickier for you if you had trouble getting that number out of your calculator. We have one last idea for this lesson in which we're going to be dealing with compound interest. And this is compound interest that is continuously compounded. Okay, Remember earlier in the chapter we did compound interest over fixed periods of time, like it got compounded monthly or compounded yearly or something like that. This is continuously compounded. It's constantly happening. Every instant it's piling up more interest. Okay. And so this has a special formula. A equals P e to the RT. A stands for the final amount. P stands for your principal or your initial amount. R is your interest rate. Again, you want to write that as a decimal, and T is the amount of time. Okay. If I were to invest $8,000, I 
at 3.75% interest compounded continuously. That word tips us off as to which formula to use. How much money will I have in 30 years? Well, we know everything we need to. We know the principal is 8000 We know the rate is 3.75%. We know time is 30. Okay, again, remember to be careful when you make that into a decimal. You move it over two places. I'm going to clean up this power up here. 30 times 0 0.0375 gives me 1.125. I'm going to do the inverse ln to get what e to that power is. And then 8,000 times that. So in 30 years, my $8,000 has become better than $24,000. It's not too bad. Free money, right? Now we can use the same idea to figure out how long it's going to take us to get to a certain amount of money. If I'm going to invest $4,000 in an account that's earning me 4% interest compounded continuously, how long will it take for the money to be worth $12,000? This time, what I don't know is T. I know A, the final amount. I know P, and I know R. If we divide by the 4,000, 3 equals E to the 0 0.04T. We want to take some kind of logarithm to get that exponent out of the way. And the best choice is LN because it will cancel the E. My calculator tells me what ln of 3 is, 1.099. And then just division tells me that t is 27 and a half years, basically, just a touch under 27 and a half years. So there you have it. We dealt with natural logs, which is the ln button on your calculator. We used the properties of logs that we learned before to work with LNs. We solved a few equations using the LN or the E. And we did some compound interest, continuously compounded interest. If you had questions along the way, especially if you had trouble getting numbers out of your calculator, make sure you uh, bring those in and ask, and we'll see you in class.